Back in England, Branwell's world had crumbled. His inability to concentrate had led to a discrepancy of 11 pounds in the company accounts, and he had been dismissed in disgrace from the railway. No one believed he took the money. He was just careless. My dear Amy, Monsieur A.J. is Professor of Rhetoric, a man of power as to mind, but very choleric and irritable as to temperament, a little black, ugly being. Sometimes an insane tomcat, sometimes a delirious hyena, occasionally mild and gentlemanlike. Emily and he don't get on well together at all. When he is ferocious with me, I cry. That sets things straight. The few private lessons we have with him have excited much spite and jealousy in the school. Mademoiselle Charlotte. In Villette, Charlotte's heroine Lucy Snow describes her growing feelings for her teacher. Could it be that he was becoming more than a friend or a brother? Did his look speak a kindness beyond fraternity or amity? My heart trembled in its place. My blood was troubled in its current. I, I was quite sick. I hardly knew how to do my work or, or keep at my post. Remember me when death's dark wing has pulled me far from thee and freed from all this suffering. My grave shall cover me. It was dreadful when we heard about Branwell's job on the railway. But soon, there was more sad news from home. Our dear aunt had died. Confident to the end that Branwell was destined for greatness, Aunt Branwell left him only her dressing case as a keepsake. Convinced that the girls were doomed to a life of genteel poverty, she left them each a legacy of almost 300 pounds. Charlotte and Emily hurried home to find that their father had received a letter from Monsieur Ege offering his daughters teaching posts. Emily said she would prefer to stay here to be my housekeeper. Charlotte seemed very eager to return to improve her French. My dear Monsieur, in my tortured dreams I see you always. Day and night, I find neither rest nor peace. Charlotte's feelings for the married Monsieur Ege had grown into a consuming passion, which she declared in a series of emotional letters. Forgive me, Monsieur. How can I endure my life if I make no effort to alleviate my sufferings? This was the love Mina Lowry had felt for Zamorna and Jane Eyre would feel for Rochester. But this was real life, not romantic fantasy. Where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man. Branwell was also tempted by an illicit passion when he went to work as a tutor to the son of Anne's employers, the Robinsons. My dear knave of trumps, I am the favourite of all the household. I shall see you at dinner, my dear. But my mistress is becoming damnably too fond of me. Although she is 17 years my senior, she shows me a degree of kindness which has ripened into declarations of more than ordinary feeling. Anne was mortified. Branwell was playing a dangerous game. 
Emily and I were quite content together. So hopeless is the world without, the world within I doubly prize, where thou and I and liberty have undisputed sovereignty. Where thou and I and liberty have undisputed sovereignty. Charlotte dashed back to Brussels, desperate to see Monsieur Hege. You're looking for my husband, Miss Bronte? I'm sure that he will agree with me that your prose style has improved immeasurably. At Thorpe Green, Branwell and Mrs. Robinson had grown careless. Whose grassy banks last Whitson tide? I sat with fears and pleasures in my soul, commingled as if roamed without control. To Lydia, Lydia Robinson. Charlotte's humiliation and Branwell's disgrace began a cycle of scandal and tragedy that would engulf the entire Bronte family.